It's a great pleasure to interview uh, one of the best subject matter experts on industrial cybersecurity, uh, Dr. Robin Berthier. Uh, Dr. Berthier is a co-founder and CEO of Network Perception. Network Perception is a cybersecurity technology company addressing the challenges of network visibility and cyber resiliency. He has over 15 years experience in the design and development of network security solutions. He was part of the University of Illinois research team that originally developed the technology that drives the network perception platform. And he received his PhD in the field of cybersecurity from the University of Maryland at uh, College Park. Uh, welcome, Dr. Berthier. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Chuck. Oh, it's my pleasure. And uh, I want to start off uh, I mean, just when you thought things couldn't get worse. You know, it was a, it's the year of, uh, of uh, critical infrastructure attacks on cybersecurity. Uh, related to cybersecurity, uh, you know, the water uh, plants and, and now Colonial Pipeline. Right. Um, can you explain, you know, why there are a sudden rush of attacks on on, uh, on this infrastructure? Is it uh, related to the IT, OT convergence of these systems or are there other factors too? Uh, looking forward to hear what you have to say. Yeah, no, great question. And, and I remember back like just a few months away uh, after the solar, solar wind uh, incident, you know, there were questions on whether this was purely an IT uh, attack and the industrial side was was mostly safe. And, and then, uh, you know, we were uh, discussing with our, uh, with our community around, you know, this can impact OT and, and we need to be careful. And the next big bridge will likely be here on the industrial side this year. And, and we didn't know, that was just a few months ago and, and now it happened. Um, and, you know, the, the, the colonial pipeline is, is just eye-opening in terms of, the scale and, and the impact it can have on, on everyone's lives. Um, so, you know, I think there, uh, as you said, there, the, the, the addition of new communication technology to the OT side uh, for, you know, uh, more efficiency is, is just a trend that's been started years ago and that will just keep uh, uh, growing. And so our dependence on cyber systems uh, just keeps increasing every year. And, the industrial systems are a particularly attractive target for uh, for groups uh, attacking them through ransomware and, and other uh, malware because when you disrupt an industrial operation, then the cost of the disruptions can quickly ramp up in the millions of dollars per hour. Um, and so uh, that pushes those industrial systems to like pay a ransom or or, or address things, uh, you know, much faster than, than a traditional uh, corporation. And so the, the bad guys identified that uh, pretty uh, quickly. And so now uh, they're targeting those internal systems. And, and uh, the fact that we have those communications between IT and OT and uh, the difficulty of, of segmenting your network correctly and maintaining visibility on layers and layers of communications that are, uh, you know, adding complexity to what you have to uh, protect is, uh, is, a, is a huge challenge for any industrial system. Is there a, a major difference from uh, protecting uh, an IT system and an OT system? And uh, you know, how do you, uh, you know, basically work in that situation where you have two different types of, of, of security networks that you have to protect that are interacting? Yeah, good question. So the you know, one of the first major differences in your priorities uh, on the OT side, number one priority is safety. And, and you know, that thing, that's what uh, pushed the decision from Colonial uh, to shut down everything because safety first, they didn't want any of those locked in uh, ransom uh, workstations to, you know, affect equipment that could uh, damage environment or, or damage uh, people's lives. On the IT side, um, uh, often the top priority will be availability of a resource or, or, or you know, being able to access a service right away. And, and so we have a shift in terms of priorities there between IT and OT, which makes their, uh, you know, the, the job of cybersecurity slightly different. Uh, another important difference is that on the IT side, you have uh, orders of magnitude more in terms of protocols, applications, uh, users, uh, compared to the OT side. So the OT side is a much more 
deterministic environment where you have you know, specific like scalar communication going out uh, like once an hour on a very periodic basis and you know exactly what to expect in terms of, of network packet. And that actually brings an advantage for uh, the protective layer because you can use that determinism to um, quickly detect if something is not following the plan, which is not something you can do easily on the IT side. I understand. That's a very, very big difference. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, it, that I see that's sort of consistent with all these attacks is that it, we've been reactive. Yeah. Uh, we not necessarily know what, what's, what's happening, where it is, how far they're in the system. Um, what can we do in terms of a strategy? I, I read a memo of yours recently uh, that, that recommended network architecture reviews. Um, can you elaborate on that more on, on really how to create a, a protective sure. strategy? Sure, you know, good point. So the theme there is really to think in terms of uh, resiliency. Like, like we know that it's not a, uh, an if we, we get attacked, it's, it's a when. And so with that in mind, you need to build your architecture to become resilient to cyber attacks. And that means investing in uh, protection, detection, and response. And starting with the protection side, you need to like the number one priority is to understand what you have. Like if you don't have visibility over what's deployed in your environment, then there's no way you can protect it efficiently. And so that's why my you know, number one recommendation there was to start with an architectural review, which is you know, uh, step one, uh, updating your asset inventory. You may have already some inventory of what's deployed, but you need to make sure that documentation is up to date. Uh, it's, it's, like with the, the speed at which networks are evolving nowadays, uh, you know, quickly those are becoming outdated. So it's even better if you can have automated solution to, um, to uh, collect information about your devices and make sure you have an up-to-date and set inventory. And then uh, number two is to understand as part of this architecture review, what are the, um, what are the critical data flows between the different segments of your network. So you may have you know, a specific area of your network, a zone that's dedicated to your uh, critical equipment. You need to understand and have visibility over communication paths that go in and out of that uh, critical zone. And, and every one of those data flows needs to be justified and needs to be you know, following what we call the, the principle of least privilege, which means it's on the need to know basis that you need to allow and permit those data flows. You don't want to see you know, a firewall being configured with uh, allow traffic from any source to the server on any service. That, that, that would be way uh, too open uh, to respect that principle of least privilege. So you want to restrict everything based on the, uh, on the need to know. And then you want to, uh, as part of this architecture review, uh, make sure that, like, verify that this is correctly enforced and your policy is correctly implemented by your, your set of, uh, of firewalls and routers and, and network devices. So it sounds like a, a security by design, not only in the technologies, but in the people's process and, and all the compliance issues Correct. is a critical aspect of this. Correct. And, and, um, and, and really investing in, in defense in depth which mean that it's not sufficient to have just a single layer. You need to add more layers in order to keep increasing the cost of an attack. Uh, so you, you know, uh, having this architecture like, like by design where you segment things and you restrict communication between zones. Um, and then also investing in uh, intrusion detection systems and active traffic monitoring solutions. Uh, and then, uh, and then adding layers of protections to uh, so that if some if some layers get breached, you have backups and you have other ways to uh, prevent uh, an attack from either starting or from spreading to a, a wide area of your of your systems. Great. Um, with both solar winds and now Colonial Pipeline, um, you know maybe Colonial Pipeline uh, uh, saw this earlier than than solar winds. I'm sure they did, but. A lot of this now transcends into the incident response issues. Uh, right. How important are incident response and what do you need to do to have an effective incident response plan to, to mitigate the cyber breach? Yeah, no, that's extremely important. So 
um, every organization with industrial systems should have you know, an incidence response plan and a, a trained a team of first responders to be able to intervene when, when th something happened. And, you know, the, the question of visibility also comes back to the incident response team because, uh, you know, when something happened, you only have a few hours to really understand the scope and to make like the correct informed decision in order to, uh, to limit the spread and, and uh, and contain uh, the threat in some areas of your of your systems, and so that visibility like needs to be prepared much before the breach. Like the incident response team needs to go through um, uh, scenarios and tabletop exercises to understand, you know, if this gets compromised, what will be your you know playbook or step by step um, uh, response to be able to uh, understand what's going on and to be able to uh, contain and then uh, and block the spread. So, uh, you know, from from my experience, I've seen most uh, large organizations and, and medium sized they already have an incident response plan. But in the vast majority, those plans, you know, are quite outdated. And so I think, you know, now with the uh, the the recent event last week, it's a really great opportunity. For you to like for every organization to uh, uh, review that plan and make sure it's up to date make sure everyone is trained and uh and make sure that if something happened you, you you are ready you have that visibility and you can uh, uh you can you know the, the important part here is to be able to gain uh, not only visibility but also velocity like you want to be able to act extremely fast in terms of of understanding what's going on and then being able to respond and, and that speed of response is, is a really key characteristics of a good uh, incident response team. Great, now as we, as we uh, get into the early parts of the fourth industrial revolution, really the, the merging of the physical and digital, right. uh, we're, we're now uh, having a lot of new technologies come online, including artificial intelligence, machine learning, 5G, internet of things. Um, should the, these, the, the perception of what needs to be done and your strategy, and your whatever you're all that you've been talking about your architectural review your incident response should it be adapted now to this new reality of uh, emerging technologies absolutely absolutely and and all those technologies well while they are you know adding a lot of efficiency productivity and and uh and, and exciting you know new capabilities they're also fueling that complexity and they're also increasing our attack surface uh, you know the, the bring your own device to work uh, now you can uh, you know, connect your tablets, your phone to the corporate network, and then that's another vector of attack, and that, that's uh, you know another thing that you, you need to protect. And in the OT in the OT space, we see also that expansion of the attack surface. So as we go through this um, revolution, and as we go through adding those different capabilities, uh, I think what's important is to and break down this visibility into different abstraction level like you want to be able to maintain you know a, a dashboard a high level you know, 10,000 feet view of your system with capabilities to you know dive and 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 get to the details from that high level view and you need to equip your different teams with those different levels of visibility not everyone needs to know all the details but having a, a coherent uh, way to navigate through, okay, what, what does my system look like uh, from, a, from a high level? And then how can I get details on demand when something happens or, or, or a sensor becomes red in one zone or, or I need to uh, understand what's going on. And so bringing those different technology from you know, cloud, uh, Internet of Things, uh, new smart sensors, but maintaining the visibility at, at different uh, layers of abstraction, I think, will be a, a challenge for you know in the in the years to come for both you know, organizations going through that uh, those changes as well as a security vendor to be able to uh, provide uh, highly usable solution. Uh, you, you know, on on the IT and cybersecurity space, there is a history of of complex technologies. And so it's now the burden is on, on the vendors to be able to uh, design extremely 
you know, user friendly and and, uh, and 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 to be able to to again gain that velocity and be able to take decisions fast at different levels of visibility. Now, one final question. Uh, that was actually very very interesting to to learn about the application of those new technologies. Um, I, I uh, it's, it was evident now that the industrial control systems and and critical infrastructure are, are being targeted by uh, significant and sophisticated uh, hackers and what recommendations, and it's a different kind of uh, protective uh, strategy necessary uh, to protect this industrial infrastructure. What couple key recommendations would you give to, to companies that in, in, are operating in this space and how they could best uh, prepare for what likely would be more and more ransomware attacks and more and more uh, attempts at hacks, uh, whether it be phishing or insider threat or whatever. Um, what do you say they should be uh, doing? Yeah, great question. So, uh, you know, my my three recommendation now is, as we mentioned earlier, you know, starting an architecture review, make sure you have up to date documentation on your assets, those communication flows into your critical assets, you know, you know building that visibility today and not waiting for the next uh, the next incident. Um, second, using that event to run through tabletop exercises like like this week, you can uh you can ask your incident response team to say okay if we had been attacked by a ransomware on the it side what would be the consequences and everyone uh, you know go, goes into a, a tabletop simulation there where we we go through our plan and we make sure we have a, a solid response plan and then third um you know really learning about this concept of resiliency uh you know, discussing with your uh, with your leadership on uh, how like how can we you know architecture like, like secure by design. What are the principles that we need to understand and put in place? It starts at a very basic level with you know cyber hygiene, like how to make sure we follow best practices, and then what type of um, risk assessment framework we want to adopt, or, or if we already have one. How can we verify that we are following the rules of that framework and then really elevating towards uh you know that, that the, the resiliency the the these excellent resources from NIST and from other agencies around uh, building a cyber resiliency program and uh and i think it's important that everyone understand that concept because that will uh that will become extremely prevalent in the next uh, few years Great advice. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bertier. And uh, your your insights are are, are are practical, practical and useful. And uh, is there a, a website or any uh, other point of contact that people can get in touch with you if they learn they want to learn more about uh, protecting critical infrastructure? Sure. So our website is uh, yeah network-perception.com, and we have you know we publish um, um, uh, briefing centers and and, uh, and and best practices and recommendations on those. Uh, questions of uh, visibility for networks and firewalls, uh, so that you know, we have, we actually have a, a knowledge base to help the community there on on getting that information in a, in a clean way, in a clear way. Great, thank you very much. It's a pleasure uh, speaking with you. Thanks, Jack. Thanks a lot.